What's up, YouTube? This is your boy, 30 God. Imagine one of your last text messages from your son was that he was being chased by three white men and three white pickup trucks and then ends up dead. This is his story. His name is Rasheem Carter. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. The Smith County Sheriff says the remains of Rasheem Rael Carter were found south of Taylorsville on Wednesday. According to law enforcement, a landowner had a game camera set up in that area, and when the camera was checked last week, a picture... Unanswered questions surrounding the case of a missing Fayette man whose decomposing body was found on November 2nd in Taylorsville. Rasheem Carter, 25, was reported missing in early October while staying at a Laurel Hotel and working in Taylorsville. According to the family, in early October, Carter went to the police department in Taylorsville to report that some men in a white truck were after him. He told them that someone was trying to harm him, and I heard him when he said that, but they told me he never said someone was trying to harm him, said Rasheem Carter's mom, Tiffany Carter. Little did they know I was on the phone when he said it. He told me on the phone personally that it was three white trucks full of white men. He waited nervously in the police station, pacing back and forth, and asked the officers for a ride back to Laurel, where his hotel was, said Carter's aunt Felicia Kahu. Kahu says they refused because it was out of their jurisdiction and claimed that they had no room for him to stay. Laurel is 30 minutes or so from Taylorsville. In an exclusive interview with the Vicksburg Daily News, Smith County Sheriff Joel Hudson responded by saying Rasheem Carter did not indicate he was in any danger when he came to the police department. To them, he never seemed to be in any distress or anything and he never mentioned anything about being in an immediate danger, Hudson said. They offered him a phone call and he said he had a phone and then they offered him a charger but the charger that was available didn't fit his phone so he was just trying to find a ride back to Laurel when he came in contact with police where Carter stayed that night is unclear but he returned to Taylorsville PD the next day and according to his family received no assistance on Sunday morning October 2nd a family friend Esha Green informed Carter that they were coming to pick him up which would take several hours once Green made it to Taylorsville she never did find Carter Green also drove to many other places including Carter's hotel in Laurel but she never made contact with him later he was seen on a landowner's camera seeming to look around with a stick in his hand. It looks like he knows that someone is after him and it looks like he has a stick in his hand so I don't know if someone was chasing him but he has bruises and a gash on his hairline concluded his mother Tiffany Carter. The family stated that two days after the family friend couldn't find him someone withdrew $500 from his bank card. Carter's family doesn't believe that it was Rasheem who withdrew that money. They also believe that he was murdered on October 2nd. Some cameras where ATMs are they roll for like 30 days so they know they had a time frame on getting the information from the footage or wherever he was, Tiffany Carter said. According to Houston, the last time that car was used was on October 13th. According to the family, Carter went to a store the day before he disappeared. There, he told his mother that the cashier was on the phone and said, yeah, he's in here and he quickly left the store. Someone must have called in the store or they were on their personal cell phones and asked if he was in the store, Tiffany Carter said. He told me that when I heard them say, yeah, he's in the store, I got out of the store. Houston said he is aware of the incident involving the cashier, but the cashier had no knowledge of that. Carter's mother states Rasheen messaged her the name of the person who would be responsible for his death if something happened to him. Due to the sensitive nature of this case and the as yet unproven assertions, the Vicksburg Daily News will withhold that information for now. On November 2nd, Carter's body was discovered in a wooded area in Taylorsville. According to the family, he had his Super 8 hotel key in his wallet along with his chime card. He also had what appeared to be a cell phone battery but not his cell phone. We believe it to be a cell phone battery but it had been in the woods for several weeks and we weren't able to locate the phone, said Houston. It may not be a cell phone battery. It possibly could be but it was sent to the crime lab as well. The body was discovered by the Smith County Sheriff's Office in a pine tree plantation with the help of cadaver dogs from North Mississippi. Houston confirmed a cell phone charger, a vape, all of his bank cards and car keys and cash was found on the body. As of now, according to the family, the Smith County Sheriff's Office has stated there is no indication of foul play in Carter's death. The Smith County Sheriff's Office Department released a statement on their social media page which says in part, we want to reiterate that this is an ongoing investigation. Other agencies including NBI and FBI have assisted as well. All details have been given solely to the mother and if and when she wants anything additional released or if we find anything else that the public needs to know, we will release that information at that time. Houston reiterated 
reiterated that Carter's case is an open investigation. Houston went on to say the case has been taken priority in the department. Rasheem Carter leaves behind a six-year-old daughter. His remains are still in possession of the Mississippi Crime Lab awaiting an autopsy. Tiffany Carter has yet to see the remains of her son. What do you guys think happened? I want to know. Leave it in the comments for me. I can't imagine being in a situation like this. Hey, here it is, 2022 and stuff like this is still going down. I would like to see, you know, once the investigation comes out and more details emerge, I would like to see if this man really did go into the police department and let them know that he was in trouble and they did not help him. If it did happen, do you expect them to help him? I mean, it could be like a big cover up, who knows? I mean, even when he said he went to the, the store and he heard the clerk say, yeah, he's in there. Like if that did happen, who was the clerk talking to? I'm telling you, I mean, man, can you imagine? And then his body ends up, he ends up found dead. You know, we gotta know what happened in the timeline from when he last spoke to his family to the time that he died. Like, we have to find that out. If he say white men are after him in pickup trucks, I mean, come on, man. Man, protect yourself, man. Arm yourselves, man. We got to arm ourselves, man, because this stuff is happening. You know what I mean? You never know. It could be you one day. Was this a hate crime? We going to find out. We going to find out together based on what is being said. I mean, it sounds like it is. If it do come out to be that the police officers did not help him after he said that, man, something going to have to change. Something going to have to be done. Something is going to have to be done. And we need an investigation to see who is responsible for this. Because, I mean, a 25-year-old black man, you don't just end up dead for no reason. Somebody did it. Somebody did it, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe, man. Subscribe. When you come by here, make sure you subscribe. We do this daily, man. Peace. And hey, y'all make sure y'all go follow my Instagram. We putting in work.